good morning from Jerusalem. Um, this tour will take you to the Golden Calvary, um, the Garden Tomb, which is the second option for the Tomb of Jesus. You can see the light trail is now arriving and I don't want it to arrive because it will, uh, well, uh, will cover me there. One, the thing that, oh no, it doesn't, all right, done. Can you see the dome there? Yeah, right there. This is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is the most well-known place of the uh, tomb and the resurrection of Jesus. The garden tomb is located 300 meters from there. Then you can understand that it's not a huge difference if you are talking about topographically. But there are so many reasons why we do have the tombs of Jesus in the city. And although I can make a shortcut from there, um, I want you to understand why they thought that it might be the second tomb. And I'm not saying that it's not. Uh, you will have to choose by yourself. As um, one of the guys at the garden tomb told me, many years ago, tell your uh, tourist uh, to choose to be in those two places and then to choose and to follow their heart. And you know what? Follow your hearts. Let's start with that. Church of the Holy Sepulchre is from the 4th century. Protestants are only from the 15th, 16th century and up and they had no place in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then for them to be there, it was like to be in a place that is so strange for them. Another thing that they said, according to the book of John, the tomb of Jesus was, and the crucifixion place was outside the walls. And guess what? They are right. The Jews have been buried outside the walls. And I'm heading to the northern wall of Jerusalem to show you that there is a wall and we are now outside the wall. Uh, another reason I'm doing it is because um, a lot of you, the one who will visit the garden tomb by themselves, a lot of you will be in the old city and then they will go out of the old city and reach the garden tomb. Then I'm heading to the northern gate of the city, the Damascus Gate, and there uh, I will walk with you, I will take the shortest way with you to the Garden Tomb. By the way, that was the border between Israel, oh rainy clouds, it's supposed to rain a little bit this time, that was Israel, that was the no man land, United Nation. And that part was um, Jordan until 1967. Wait, I supposed to say Palestine. True, in 1948, the United Nations declared of two countries, Israel, Palestine. But the one who occupied Palestine were the Israelis. We're talking about here, the Jordanian that changed the name of Palestine to the West Bank, and I'm sure that most of you knows uh, that name. And until 1967, a six-day war, it was part of Jordan, not Palestine. In 1967, we occupied Jordan, not Palestine. And from that moment, the Palestinians wanted their country back. Why? Oh. Let's leave the politics. But you saw the border between Israel and Jordan until 1967. Um, if you ask me, any solution that both sides will agree, I will be part of it. I think that to have peace is more important than anything else. Because they are beautiful people, and I'm beautiful people. I'm a, no, I'm sorry, I'm ugly, but. In general, I'm, I'm a wonderful person. 
then you can see the walls of the city. Uh, but the walls are from the, nine, uh, from the 16th century, but it's based on ancient walls. I want to show you where is Damascus Gate. Because of uh, COVID-19, the garden tomb is open only between uh, Tuesday till Saturday. Um, I'm sure that when you will come, it will be different. And here it is, the most beautiful gate in the city, the Damascus Gate. Beautiful gate. Later on, I will make another tour, and that's for Mick that asked me to bless a blessed Jerusalem cross there and there, and uh, I will do that. And um, you will see another video of mine, but that's going to be a short video about the garden tomb and a short video about the Church of the Holy Supper. And here it is, Damascus Gate. And show you that although it's a 16th century, there's ancient part of it as well. Then here it is. Can you see the arch down there? That's from Adrian time, second century. You can hear the Arabic music. This is East Jerusalem. The smell of the food. You can imagine how amazing it is. And uh, before we will go into that street, which is, which leads you to the garden too. I want you to see something else. And then to understand why in the 19th century, so many Protestants started to doubt the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and to look for another optional place. And as you know, we're gonna be there. The only problem is that at the 18th and 19th century, that area looks a little bit different, but we will do that. To crucify someone is the, it's a very important issue. I mean, if the Romans wanted to kill someone, the best thing to do is to kill him. A spear and that's it. Throw him to from the second story, that's it, easy, doesn't cost a lot of money. To crucify someone is to send a message. You are against the Roman regime. Jesus from Nazareth, King of the Jews. And in that case, it's very important to do that at the center or the, at the most public or crowded place in uh, that area and Damascus gate is quite an important place so many of the protesters were sitting here watching Sadakaya cave and some of them said it might be the tomb of Jesus there mainly because at the other side there's a place that looked like a skull Here it's a little bit difficult to see it because the structures of the East Jerusalem, the Arab uh, um, Central Station, a little bit hiding it. Um, but so many of them meditated and said it might be there, it might be there. Uh, the only one who dared to say that it's there and started to, uh, um, the rumor was uh, Gordon. But before Gordon, uh, years before it, so many, oh look at the bagels. Here before, years before it, they uh, actually talked about it. Let me take a picture of him and a video for you. This is a Jerusalem bagel, a special unique bagel that you can find only here in Jerusalem. 
Then, this is the Golgotha, Golgotha, according to the Gordon and some of the Protestant. To the left, you see a fence, and that is uh, part of the garden tomb. Sadly, uh, they are renovating that part, then the only way to see the Golgotha is from here, and I'll try to sneak in through the public bus station. Um, let's stand there. They always suspect me because I'm taking a video. And they ask me, what are you doing? It's not legal, but it is. It's a public place. Uh, but it will stop me. You actually saw it. Then to see it from the garden tomb, it's not impossible yet. Uh, let's say in about a few months after they will finish renovating it, you will be able to see it. Then this is part of it. Here you can see the two eyes, right there. Of... Uh, of uh, the Golgotha and and one of the questions that I'm always been asked is how dare the Muslims build a public bus station here the answer is very clear for me this is a central place that's where all the people are arriving or falling and going through. And that is the idea of the Romans. They wanted you to see it. If they will crucify someone in a secret place, then they had nothing, uh, they did nothing. I mean, you just kill a person and that's it. But if you want, um, if you want to send the message, and it must be in a public place. As you can see, a lot of people are walking here. That's the way to Jaffa. That's the way to uh, Mounts of Olives, Jordan, and uh, and the Dead Sea, and then to the Galilee area. And you got the message. It's a very important place. Then in that matter. It can be, it can be true. Oh, you can see here the two domes of the Golgotha, of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Can you see it? Then it's really close to each other. I made a detour just to show you uh, the places around it. But if you are going out of the massive gate, or if you want to go in after visiting the garden tomb through uh, the massive gate. Ah, Shukran. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, you stop me because I'm clumsy. Then let me organize it for just a minute and I would... That was nice of him. Oh, my shoes. Yeah. Remember, this is Damascus Gate and if you will cross that street, you will reach that beautiful market. Remember the... Oh, look at that. This is the... Oops. This is professional. And it's all fresh and good and it's like few shekels. Then if you... On a budget or just you want to enjoy good bread, don't miss the Jerusalem break. Let's continue. The smell here is so, so, I must say. Usually it's better. And sadly, the name of that 
This is Damascus Road, but it's written in Arabic and, and Hebrew. Then, um, my English speaker, sorry. But it will go all the way straight, all the way. Another, let's say, 200 meters. You will uh, see the sign of the uh, tomb garden. Oh, here you can see it, Nablus Road. I think it will be faster to go to the road. A lot of Christian Institute here. It's part of the Christian quarter out of the walls. Beware of the scooter. Oh, damn. Bagel, bagel, bagel. Fresh, 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 especially in the morning time. See the second part of the bus station, central bus station, and look to the right, be at the right part of the road. You can see the sign in uh, three languages: the garden tomb, Gana Kever in Hebrew, and it's in Konrad Schick. Street. Just go in, see where the truck door is. That's the entrance. Because of COVID-19, it's better to check the timetable, opening time, and uh, usually on Sunday it's closed. Then we will meet each other in the other part of the door I will leave the telephone number of them uh, in the description and if I'm talking about that what about uh, is that the first time that you're watching my videos my video then subscribe my channel and you will get some details about that place and how to um, contact me the garden tomb I'm already inside the garden. Gordon Calvary, the tomb garden. Is it not amazing? Then for me, the question of is it true, the true place, if it's the original place, if it's not, it's not important. The environment here, the spiritual energy is so strong. And if we compare the Church of the Holy Sepulchre to, to that, then uh, this is more authentic. This is more beautiful. Now we know that the um, Garden of Joseph over Amitya, according to the Book of John, is near the um, near the tomb. Oh, near the Golgotha, near the Golgotha, near the Skull Hill then in that case this is the garden and sadly as i told you i won't be able to reach the golgotha viewpoint mainly because they are renovating it they're building something more modern and better and uh but i want you to to see every part of it there are two groups here now of uh, the first one is uh is really um tour guides that actually study students and the other one is a real group outside, from outside of Israel, right there. Um, it's the end, mid of October, and Israel is trying 
to find a solution for the tourism problem. I'm not working as a tour guide for more than almost two years, and they are trying to to deal with it. Uh, sadly, they're doing it too slowly. Then I believe that. I look at the lemon. I believe that at the end of December or the beginning of December, people will be allowed to go in, but usually until February, there's not a lot of tourists. Here I cannot reach um, the, the fence that I show, show you. And the other curtain is the, the Skull Hill, right there. Then that's the reason I actually started with it first, and now you know where it is. Now, the Skull Hill was belong, I mean, it belonged to the uh, Romans. Before that, it used to be a quarry. And remember that the place that uh, so, uh, we saw, Zachariah um, Caves, it was a quarry uh, for the first and second temple. And uh, it shows you that if it's quarry, it belongs to the government, King Herod, the Romans then it's not a public area but people used it as a burial site because it was outside the city it sounds like um, by the accent it sounds like from Nigeria or something in Africa I love that accent and I love those people that are so warm and we are heading to the tomb oh they blocked me from doing it no they didn't mm. I love that fruit I don't want to disturb them then I will make a round tour I will make a run tour. Let me nice to them. In that place, down there, uh, my daughter, she was very young at that time, used to play while I was guiding here. And uh, she used to come to me and say, Tzachi, Abba, Isaac, I'm talking with angels here. I'm talking with angels here. It's to the doom for me. And in about another thing that it's very important for me to tell you, a lot of the um, Protestant, and I accept it in a way, but you know, where am I? Uh, they believe that Jesus wasn't crucified on top of the Golgotha. You know, we got used to it. It's in every art, in every, uh, in every place. Uh, if I will ask you where he was crucified, you will tell me that it was on top of the Golgotha. But, let's talk about it. Read the Bible. The Bible never mentioned that he was uh, crucified on top of the Golgotha. The Bible mentioned that he was crucified at the area of the Golgotha. Then in that case, Lots of questions. Can you hear them? Can you hear them? I love that. I love that. Ah, oh, when I'm guiding those groups, ah, oh, I'm 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 smiling, but I'm smiling all the time. I love doing it. And this here small, lots of small chapels here. And what I want to do is to go to the tomb before they will reach the tomb because uh, it's uh, going to take time which is still beautiful to see beautiful to see unbelievable beautiful uh, another uh, reason to believe that it was here um, we know that the Jews used to skull um, people that were against them there one of them was St. Stephen that he was uh, was uh, 
he actually enjoyed those stones and it was out at Damascus Gate. Here it is. Here it is. And to show you that it was a very important place, uh, you can see here a wine press. If there's a wine press, it means that usually it belongs to someone very rich. And we know that Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man. There is a water system at the other side. You know what? It looks like they're going to be there another five minutes. And let's go to see it. And then we will visit the tomb. <laughs> let's keep it to the end. Usually that place is full with, with groups of disciples. So sad, isn't it? And there's a picture that I want you to see. Yes, it's still here. All right, ready? When I was standing early morning, I was standing here and right here, and you saw that is the bus station that cover most of it. And we saw the two eyes. But that's how it looks like at the 19th century. We're standing at the side of the wall of Sakaria Cave, and what you can see beautifully is the skull. Oh, let's listen to them. That's a water system, but let's go and listen to them. On the way to the water system, I want you. Oh. I want you to see a very special tree. Some of you ask me. What is the meaning of Shaked, which is my name, my family name? Here it is, now we know. I'm an almond. And Sachi, the shortcut of Isaac. Mm -hmm. Now I know all my secrets. And this is the water system. Sadly, the picture of it is gone, um, but it's a huge one. And if it's a huge one, it's, it's such a big place. It means that uh, uh, it's owned by public uh, or government or whatever. Then in that case, um, it's not a private place. That's what I mean. Now, we can go into the tomb from there, but we will do it from here. And there's a woman in it then I don't want to talk inside. Let her pray. Let's start with that. That is, there's a lot of doubt here in Kosia. Most of you are Protestant, then I can deal with it. Uh, and you can deal with it too. We are not sure that it is a tomb that Jesus was buried in it. That's why it doesn't call it um, Jesus' tomb. It's called Gordon uh, Tomb Garden. It's called uh, Gordon Calvary. So many names. It might be that. Um, some believes that it is a tomb from first... Uh, temple time, hundred years before Jesus, and some say, "All right, maybe it was that. Uh, it started from there, then, uh, then they use it later on." But that is a problem for me because we know that uh, Jesus got a tomb from Joseph of Arimathea, and we are in Joseph of Arimathea tomb that no one used before. A 
love it mark 16 6 do not afraid he comes seeking for jesus of nazareth who was crucified but he is not here because for he is risen you know what you will read it in english and i will read it for you in hebrew ready go yosef ish aramataim joseph yosef ונקדימון לקחו את גופת ישועה, ג'יזוס, ועטפו אותה בתכריכים עם פסמים כמנהג הגבורה אצל היהודים, the Jews. במקום שנצלב, the crucifixion site, ישועה, ג'יזוס, היה גן, גארדן, ובגן קבר, טומב, קבר חדש, new tomb, שעוד לא הונח בו איש. שם, שם, זו, so, שם שמו את ישוע, כי ערב שבת היה ליהודים והקבר קרוב. And this is the gospel, John gospel, הבשורה gospel, על פי יוחנן, John, י"ט, 19, um, 40-42. The only thing that I think you actually realize, or it could read, is 40-42. I'm not going in. She is praying. She asked me something. Then let's talk about how the Jews used to be buried at the time of Jesus. Uh, first of all, there were niches. And uh, they used to put the body in those niches. Um, Rockat tomb was only for uh, rich people, and Joseph of, of Arimathea was a rich man. Then, in that matter, he. Um, gave Jesus his own tomb because every Jew must be buried before sunset. Then he asked Pontius Pilate, he had a good connection with him, to get the body of Jesus. And he got it. Because Jesus had no tomb, he is not from Jerusalem, he is from um, the Galilee area. He gave Jesus his own tomb that no one used before. Now I will talk about it, that no one used before. There were so many niches, and they used to bury the dead there. And... Um, and uh, let's say there are four niches, what will happen to the fifth one? I mean, there's no place for him. Then they used to put, the, to, to, to open the oldest niche and to put the bones of the, that man in an osory. Let me show you what an osory looks like. Here it is. In those kind of boxes, they used to bury, uh, they used to put the bones in. And then they could bury someone else instead. When I'm talking about instead, um, it's actually a problem for us because Jesus got a tomb that no one used before. In the tomb, you will see three beds, not niches, which is more likely from the first temple time. The door wasn't so high. It was lower than what you see here. The people have to bow when they enter into it. The first room is where they purify the body of Jesus. And then one of those niches, some say the left one, is um, the tomb of Jesus himself. Um, you, can he you can see here a canal. According to what we believe, the rolling stone was there. We didn't find here the rolling stone, but here there's a rolling stone from a different place, not from here. Now, if it's okay by you, let's wait. I can hear her praying, and is more important than me. And I don't I do have lots of time. I mean, I'm not in a rush today. Well, I'm trying not to be in a rush anyhow. Oh, I have no tourist. Uh, then, did you already subscribe my channel? If you want to, let, let's start with it. Some of you, some of my scribe, uh, subscribers say um, you're doing an amazing work, uh, work and thank you for that. I'm really trying to do that. I love doing it. 
and because you don't have tour tourists we will um, support you then they asked me to open the buy me a coffee um, site and through there you can donate if you want to do that it's really important for me at the beginning it was too difficult for me to to say it because my ego wasn't didn't let me do that I'm doing it because I love to do that but when I bought um, and you dressed to my daughter she hated the dress I won't do that anymore only with her but she loved the idea that I can afford to do that uh, let's wait for the lady to go out She's more than 25 minutes there, but it's so important for me. I'm actually crying when I hear her. But it's so rare to see the shape of, as we believe, a cross here. And now the sun is actually touching it. And look how beautiful it is. And I'm waiting for her to go in. You do have time. Is it okay to wait? Thank you. Amazing. It's, it's so beautiful. I was crying with you and he heard you. <laughs> Where are you from, India? Where are you from? Nepal. You know Nepal? No, Nepal. Yes. Ah, I love Nepal. I love, I've been in Nepal are twice. You? I'm from Tel Aviv. You are an Israeli? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> speak you can, ah, you speak, speak it, ah, you can speak it. Uh, I love Nepal. Uh, where from Nepal? Where from Nepal? Kathmandu. Kathmandu. I've been there I three in times. I've been on for 20 years. Oh! <laughs> 10 to less. Oh, wow. And now 40 years. 40, 40 years? Then I'm done. I work in Metapelet. Then in Nepal. If you never been to visit Nepal, my friends, go there. It's amazing. And especially Kathmandu, Kathmandu. Then I just want them to see the, the tomb. And I, I will say it again and again and again. I was praying with you. And what you said, he heard you, sir, for sure. Then I will do it quickly because I'm, you want to continue? <laughs> right. What's your name? And my name is Isaac. And you can see them are shivering. She, 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 you are all amazing. And you sang beautifully. <laughs> then let, let me show them the, the tombs. And look at the ancient um, cross that we found here. My bed, like three beds. One, two, and three. One of them was of Jesus. Do you think, do you know where the tomb of Jesus was, that one or that one or that one, or generally? Yeah. yeah, we don't know for sure. But it's such an amazing place. And um, you've been blessed by her. She blessed you, not me. She blessed you. And again, thank you very much. And now you can see every inch of it. Now you can be part of it. You are already part of the family. You, no, you don't be very, you're already part, part of the family and if it's okay by you I will enter soon for like two more minutes all right can I do that even if you are praying all right and don't yeah, no problem for you okay okay thank you very much then you saw the tomb and you met an amazing Nepalese woman that works here in Israel she is not a tourist but she made me cry. And you know, in Israel and all over the world, we are suffering. But the, the foreign workers in Israel are suffering more than the rest. Because the first, first one to be, I mean, kicked out of their job were them. And I do have a very good friend, a Protestant guy from India, from the south of India. His name is Danny. I mean, he's Real name is not Danny, but uh, we know it as Danny. And he lived in a room together with another uh, worker, and 
Uh, that worker worked at the airport at night time, and then he could sleep at night time there, and then they used to switch, because they, then they used the same room and the same bed. And uh, what can I tell you? He suffered more than me, than um, Danny, I'm praying for you. Thank you very much for being here. With me.